is an interesting place. Is it a fishing port? Is it a holiday resort? Not many people know about the history of Fleetwood. And we're here to try and find out what it's like to live in this place out on the Lancashire coast. For early visitors to Fleetwood, it was a chance to sample uh, the glamorous side of life, a more genteel style of living than they were used to at home. And uh, the railway came to Fleetwood in 1840. It was the first town in the whole of England to have a railway line to the coast. And uh, it preceded Blackpool by six years and it was well ahead of Bournemouth, Brighton, etc. Uh, people started to come in their thousands in the first season to Fleetwood and they were looking for places to stay. And the Victorian guest house uh, was a place where rules were applied very stringently. Uh, children had to take their shoes off at the door, they weren't allowed to bring sand in uh, and when they sat down at the table uh, it was a new experience for them. Uh, all the furnishings of the house would have been much grander probably than they had in their houses at home uh, and the seaside holiday by our standards wouldn't really have been much fun. The, the guests would have walked on the beach along the tide line, they'd have perhaps paddled into the sea, been very daring. A few of them might even have worn a bathing costume and gone into the sea. Uh, but really it was a very uh, laid back type of holiday where people uh, enjoyed simple pleasures, uh, the nice fresh air, a sit down on a seat or a deck chair uh, and generally uh, very relaxed but by our standards, rather dull and uninteresting. Yeah, the children of the family might even have been intrigued by the pet dog. In the very earliest years of the town's history, uh, a lot of the fishing took place from the beach where men would simply go out with a, a net over their shoulder or they would go out and search for shellfish like cockles and mussels on the beach which could be eaten, they could be taken home, boiled up and obviously provided a meal for what were poorer families at that time in the town of Fleetwood. One of the parts of Fleetwood history that isn't well known is that from about 1860 to 1930 Fleetwood was a barracks town where soldiers lived in the town and trained for war and in the Great War 1914-18, Fleetwood lost over 300 of its young men in that war. When the war ended, the fishing industry became strong again and the prosperity of Fleetwood started to grow. The shops on the main street improved, transport links to the town improved and visitors started to return in large numbers. By 1933, Fleetwood was in a position to become a borough in its own right. That was a town with its own town council, it, it made its own decisions and it was responsible for a large amount of money which it raised in rates from the townsfolk. And in 1933 Fleetwood took on a new style. Uh, we got our own mayor uh, with his mayoral robes, we got a new town crest which was very modern for the time and very eye-catching but the money that the fishing industry was generating for the town was spent on the seafront and Fleetwood got new seafront gardens, it had a wonderful big open air swimming pool for visitors, it had the Marine Hall built which is still there, the ballroom, the theatre of the Marine Hall and the seafront became a place where thousands of visitors came for their annual holidays to Fleetwood through the big railway station that Fleetwood had. One of the measures of a, of, a, of a town in the 1940s and 50s was often whether pupils in schools learnt about those towns. And Fleetwood in the 40s, 50s, 60s was a town which appeared in geography school textbooks. It was a town with an important part to play in Lancashire, in the economic life of Lancashire. It was a prosperous, wealthy town where there were over 10,000 jobs available in fishing, where hundreds of thousands of people came for the holidays every year and for day trips. It had a very prosperous, uh, regular market, which is still popular today, but not as much as it was then. So pupils throughout the country learnt about Fleetwood uh, as the third biggest fishing port in the United Kingdom. After World War II, 
Fleetwood's prosperity continued to increase. More new ships were built for the fishing industry. The, the record landings of fish took place in 1947 and the town seemed to be doing extremely well. And right through the 1950s, uh, visitors were rolling in in the summer. But two major decisions uh, had a big effect on the decline of Fleetwood. The first one, in 1961, was when the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company withdrew their steamer service to the Isle of Man. On a busy Saturday, sometimes six or seven steamers, perhaps with 15 to 20,000 people on board, went through the port of Fleetwood on the way to the Isle of Man for the holidays. And Fleetwood benefited from that. Shops, pubs, cafes, all got a big return. And then just five years later, British Railways made a terrible decision to close the main railway station. So where all the visitors to Fleetwood came in, the day visitors, the week-long visitors, the people who came for the holidays, they had no means of getting to Fleetwood at all. And by 1970, the passenger service to Fleetwood, the rail service, had closed completely. And from that time onwards, people were relying on bus services, very irregular bus services, and coach services from Manchester to get here on the holidays and the numbers of visitors declined rapidly. The Red Falcon is a ship that's firmly in the minds of many Fleetwood residents today. In Christmas 1959, this ship went to the bottom with all hands, all the men on board it were lost uh, and uh, it was the last great trawler disaster to befall Fleetwood. Some of the designs of fishing vessels over the years are shown here and uh, the, from the very earliest of sailing smacks which were used in Fleetwood from around 1850 to around 1920 uh, and then through the steam trawler which uh, was the main backbone of the industry from about 1900 to 1950 and then the oil diesel powered trawlers, which we can see here, which were the folks of the fleet in the 50s and 60s. And then finally, the last development came with the stern dragging uh, vessels. We've got here the Idina, it's a model uh, made very recently. And these ships were the backbone of the industry in the 70s and 80s. Well, this old weather beaten lady, Harriet, was built in Fleetwood in 1893 at a time when Fleetwood had 60 of these in its fishing fleet. She's a fishing smack, and she's one of the oldest fishing vessels in the country that still exist. And she's on a very select group of vessels called the National Fleet List. That's the 200 most historic vessels in the UK. So we're very lucky really to still have this to look at. A great example of Victorian workmanship. Fleetwood Crafts were built her and she spent nearly all her life working out of Fleetwood. I wondered what local residents might feel about Fleetwood, what they think of it now. Uh, many of them will have memories of the past, but what they think its future might be. I know that it was a fishing port and I know that it had the best town award for two years running in the early 2000s. I know it used to be a fishing port quite a few years ago. It hasn't been around for too long, only about 200 years, but I don't really know that much about Fleetwood, and I don't think a lot of people do, and that's something we really need to work on, you know, we need to know more about where we come from. Fleetwood to me is just a town in a bigger picture. I see it developing in a few years' time with a bigger town centre. Um, it's a community. I come from Fleetwood, a lot of my friends are from Fleetwood, so my, all my family lives in Fleetwood, so it, it's a community to me, we all, we all work together and we all try and make each other's lives a bit better. I don't know, it's hard to say because obviously a big part of Fleetwood is the fishing industry, but that's going down, but I'm sure that we will find something else to do in the future and I hope that we continue to prosper like we always have. 
Well, over its 180 year history, Fleetwood has been many things and has worn many hats. It started out as a, a select holiday resort for the wealthy, it became uh, a holiday destination for working people from Lancashire. It's been a major world cargo port with, with cargoes coming from America, uh, the Far East and from Scandinavia. It's been one of the great fishing ports of the UK, the third biggest at one time. And throughout its history, it's had one common uh, face, and that's been the face of the Holdy Resort. And uh, even today, people come here on holiday, uh, happily, come for day trips. And on a nice, bright summer day, uh, there are a few places that are nicer. It's got wonderful views over to the Lakeland Hills, and it's still a popular destination for people. I've been fascinated by Fleetwood's past and its history, but to me Fleetwood is my hometown. It's where I grew up, where my father grew up. It was where I was educated and I'm very grateful for everything that Fleetwood's given me over the years. Uh, it's a place where I'm very happy and I still enjoy coming several days a week uh, to spend some of my recreation time in retirement. Uh, I've got some very good friends here and I hope to be coming here for many more years yet into the future.